Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Cody Kit. <coughs> Excuse me, Cody, and I will be your host for the next hour. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Thank you all so much. Hey, Umicorn, Clever, Sam, good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining. If you guys have never caught my show, Illustrating Stories, basically how this show works is that I take a couplet written by my husband, and um, I am also using some old artwork to recreate new illustration based all around the text uh, that we have been given. Um, so yeah, if you want to hop on over to Photoshop, we can just see what we're going to be working on today. <laughs> hey guys, welcome. Hey Oliver. Hi, Tamika. Welcome everyone. Good to see you. Um, okay, so we're going to be working with this little tiger character that I drew. Actually, I think it was like all the way back in 2018, I think I drew this character. So we're bringing him, bringing him back from the archives here. Um, so the text that we're going to be working with today is little tiger wants to catch a bug inside his net. Let's tag along and watch him close to see what he will get. So we are going to be drawing a little bug catching, um, explorer illustration today. We're starting from scratch. I don't have a sketch started yet. So we're going to be working through, um, kind of my, just my thought process on how I would go about, uh, kind of breaking down this text to figure out how, I would illustrate it. Um, <laughs> Sam says, love that background. Thank you. I don't do jungle scenes very often, but um, yeah, I I had this little like little tiger explorer um, entomologist, if you will, uh, uh, idea a while back. I, I'm kind of sad that I actually haven't drawn him again since then. So um, that's part of the reason why I wanted to bring him back here. Um, I had a couple of ideas for today's um, sketching. So I guess I'll just go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna make this um, a little bit smaller just so we can keep the whole thing on the screen here while we work. Typically when I'm coming up with like um, uh, scenes, I will work pretty small to begin with. So I hope it's not too small for you guys. I feel like sometimes it my thumbnailing ends up being kind of like looking really small on the stream. Um, but if it's a little bit too small, just let me know and I'll zoom in more. Um, but I was thinking I had a couple of ideas. So obviously, you know, the text up here. Um, so we have bug. Let me highlight. Let me grab my big old red, red marker here. So we have bug, net, little tiger. Of course, that's our main character. We want that in the scene. Catch. So we're going to be catching a bug in a net. And we, as the viewer, are tagging along with him. So we're going to see, we're going to view him catching a bug or <laughs> attempting to catch a bug, at least. Um, so, and we're going to see what he's going to get. So actually, I want you guys to put suggestions in the chat on what kind of bug you want a uh, little tiger to catch, whether it be ladybug or maybe a caterpillar or something. Um, I was thinking, I have a couple of different ideas. So we could do, you know, the classic, like, um, let me, let me draw him in here really quick. There he is. There's his little, <laughs> we could, uh, do, you know, like maybe he's like reaching forward, like, uh, maybe he's got his arms back and he's got like his net and he's gonna like catch a little, a little bundle in here. <laughs> I don't know. Um, or we could do a scene that's maybe like a table with like, maybe he's looking at a bug, like at like eye level, like here's maybe here's our little, our little beetle friend here. And then maybe he's got like a little magnifying glass. Maybe he's like looking. The fun thing about adding a magnifying glass to illustrations is like adding the like the eye that's like looking <laughs> looking into the magnifying glass here maybe he's got like a little paw and he's like looking at it and maybe maybe he's got like little um you know taxidermy bugs in the background or something i don't know like that on his walls or um and maybe maybe he's got maybe he's got like a net here on the t on like on hanging on his wall maybe he maybe he's already caught this bug and he's studying it um, I don't know. What do you guys think? 
inchworm. We could also do like a little inchworm, like a whoop, little inchworm friend here. <laughs> rhino beetle. Yes, yes. Rhino beetles are beautiful as well. Dragonfly. Praying mantis. Very all, all great suggestions. Hey, Steven. Welcome. How are you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> okay, what do you guys think? What would you what would you prefer to see before we choose our bug? I guess depending on what kind of scene we want to choose. Um, if we did want to do like a beetle or something, we could and we wanted to choose this first scene, we could put the bug on a tree a la Animal Crossing, you know, like if we wanted to do a a beetle of some kind on like a tree um or we could have like a flying butterfly um but what do you guys what do you guys think one or two for our composition let me know um and in the meantime i am going to just i think i'm just gonna grab some of these colors and just throw them here out in the open here i'm going to just like pick some whoops just going to pick some of these colors to kind of create our palette. So we definitely need this or these orange colors. We got that cream and the brown cuz those are little tiger's colors. And then we have we have the the tan for his little explorer's outfit. Um that's kind of like all we need unless we unless we want to include um like some kind of um brown tone or maybe we could include this this purpley color <laughs> Butler says I like jumping spiders but people be scared <laughs> Inchworm, inchworm, I feel like could work the best for the composition of number two, just because, um, you know, you could have like a little inchworm on the table here that he's studying. So if you guys want an inchworm, we'd most likely go with number two. <laughs> Pixie says, I love how Cody's stream feels. It's always so cozy. Oh, thank you so much, Pixie. For, Clever says number one is action packed and dynamic. I to I agree. I agree. Um, let's see here. Let's start like adding a little bit of detail. Maybe that would help help us kind of like decide decide our decision. <laughs> let's grab and then let's kind of like just start bringing out his little his little nose here. Just using my old illustration as reference again because I haven't drawn this character in many years. So I'm kind of just like trying to recreate. He's got kind of a wide head. So let's pull that out. His his white spots on his face almost look like glasses. Then he's got his little stripes coming down on his forehead here. And he's also got cheek stripes. And he's kind of a little a little tubby. So we want to give him a little bit of weight. And he's got his little his little outfit kind of flares out like that. And then kind of just moving with his form, we're gonna we're going to bring out the front where his buttons are. And then right about here would be where his shoulder would be. So if we were creating our own reference here, friends. So if one was to be holding a net back, one of the arms is going to be coming over the front. If he was holding it back here, I think that it would make more sense if it was here in front, but at the same time, I don't want to cover his face. So 
maybe <laughs> maybe I think we'll I think I'll do like this. He's going to have some Gumby arms, friends. That's all right. <laughs> so here's our little net. Figure out his hands. <laughs> the life of an artist. I'm looking at my webcam. <laughs> I don't have I don't have a um, a mirror at my desk, but I do have a webcam. And if you guys ever need posing, like for a specific thing, highly recommend it. It's uh, it's very useful and it's quicker than even Google searching because you can get into the exact position that you need. <laughs> Sam says I do that often. <laughs> okay. Again, I will figure out his hands at a later date. <laughs> Does anyone put off doing hands until the last second? You know, because, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll finish the entire piece and then I will figure out how to do the hands. <laughs> okay, let's make way for his little belt here. Sam says, I really need a better setup to take full body pictures of myself quicker and easier. Yeah, you need like like a little studio setup just so you can like take pictures of yourself for reference. Like sword holding and stuff like that. Clever says he has puffy paws, I'm sure. He definitely does. If you look at this hand, especially right here, um, the one that's not like foreshortened. Oh my gosh, my brushes are being weird. Um, his his hand is like the same width as his arm, and then he's just got his like his little his little mitt. It's it's very um it's very a la Tigger, I would say. It kind of it looks very Tigger. That was unintentional, but um, it's very it's very Tigger mitts. Sam says, yeah, and where the photos can transfer directly to my computer right away. Oh, that would be really nice. Um, that sounds like, yeah, that would be like a fancy, like professional, like studio setup. Um, like, um, I forget what it's called, like where the camera is wired directly to the computer. I know I've heard Terry talk about it sometimes. And then we have, oh, he's also got, he's got short sleeves. So let's add in those little short sleeves there. Are any of you guys working on any fun projects lately? I feel like I haven't, um, even though it's only been um, two weeks, I feel like I've been away from Adobe Live for a while. I don't know why. <laughs> I need to catch up with you guys. And what you're working on, all your exciting projects. I have a few things in the works for me behind the scenes. Um, 
So I'm looking forward to talking about that more. But not yet. Tethered. Yes, that's what it's called. Tethered camera. Yes, thank you. Oh, and then we also are separating this piece here. And we're going to bring his little leg up. He's kind of like reeling back, right? So he's putting like all of his weight on this foot here. Okay, so sometimes, funny enough, I, so I, I feel like I struggle with anatomy more than anything with my work, and that's part of the reason why I don't always start from sketch um, or start without sketch for streaming, just because I feel like I'm really slow with anatomy. Um, but a trick that I do sometimes um, with limbs, if um, some just what works for me, is that if I am doing a character that needs a bent leg, um, so like here's a body, and I'll typically, when I draw my anatomy, my my legs for my characters are just like rectangles like this. Um, and then if I need a bent leg, literally all I'll do is I'll just go, oops, let's say that this character is walking. So I'll literally just lasso the legs and just move them to to where they need to be. I know my posing isn't like the most dynamic in the world. Um, so if you're looking for like more of a dynamic pose, this probably wouldn't work for you. But if you're kind of going for more of like a simple look, um, it definitely helps me <laughs> when I'm like feeling stuck on uh, where to place limbs and stuff. Um, and then usually I'll come in and um, like just sculpt away uh, and kind of finesse the shape a little bit more. Um, but right there, it kind of like went from like a, a straight standing pose to a walking pose. So like if I wanted to do that for this character, what I could do, what I could do is I could just go like this. If I feel like I'm I'm not sure of where to place his leg here, and then I'm just going to move the whole thing. To where I want it to be. This is the like the just the great thing about digital art too, is that it's just so forgiving. Like you can do this kinds of these kinds of things with digital art. So like if I want it to be like way out here, I think it's a little bit too long. So I'm gonna scrunch it in here. And then deselect, and then I'm gonna lasso right, right. Uh, like at the midpoint, like right where the knee would be. And just, I'm just going to create a knee. Like this. <laughs> <clears throat> Sam says, maybe I'll actually make an effort to finally set it up this week. Hey, that yeah, that's the, hey, that's the project that you're going to work on this week. Do it, Sam, do it. It's always those projects that you know would help your workflow tremendously and be like, wow, this would save me a lot of time, but I'm way too lazy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel a lot of, about a lot of things like keyboard shortcuts for instance is like it just working those new things into your workflow or if like there's something that you need to like figure out for your workflow or or a project like that that you know would help you but it's just a lot of work to set up it always just ends up getting put off <laughs> okay something like that and then I am going to um, flip my canvas horizontally because I'm fairly certain it doesn't look too bad, but it it needs to it needs to get push and pulled, I think. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and lasso him here. And what I like to do uh, typically when I go to flip my canvas for me, just the way that I draw usually things are like typically like skewed to one to one direction so what i'll do is i'll um go to transform and then distort distort is like my favorite form of transform because what i will do is i'll just pull one 
um one corner like this and usually that's kind of all i need at least like i said at least for the way that i draw it kind of just like pulls it just in the direction that it really needs to go here so like i can just kind of like finesse it a little bit and you can kind of like skew it however you like just like that and then always don't forget to um change it back the other direction because sometimes i'll skew it a little bit too much one way and then i have to like refresh my eyes again flipped the other way the right way rather um so yeah make sure you don't forget to change your canvas back and kind of just look at it from both directions I'm going to add in his little shoes here. And typically when I'm doing clothes, um, it was a little bit different with his torso just because um, his shirt was had a little bit more like detailed shape than I typically do. But usually i'll start with like shapes like this and then i would draw the clothes on top of that um but as you can see i'll I'll actually do that with the pants here so he's got his little shorts they're pretty like wide wide leg shorts going on and he's got his, his little crew socks so what i'm gonna do with this leg um since it's pulling up so gravity is gonna pull the, the clothing down his leg momentum is going this way and gravity is pulling this way. So the fabric is actually going to be closer to his leg on this side than this side. So I still want to give it a little bit of volume on the top side. So I'll put it just a little bit above his leg there. Yeah, so they fall right above his knee. So I'm going to put it right here. And then we're going to extend that line a little bit out. Uh, farther out there so we're gonna pull his pant leg up there and then all we have to do is just erase his leg lines from underneath and now we have his pants that are being affected by gravity and then we can add in like the little the little stitching lines here and there we go and then his, we can just add in his little markings. So he's got his little stripies here. Like that. Hi, Penny. Welcome. How are you doing? Um, and then same thing for the other side. But this leg isn't being manipulated by gravity as much. Um, so this one will be a little bit more centered on the leg. And then again, we're going to do it right above that knee line there. His supposed knee on his perfectly straight leg. And then I don't have, so this would actually be the outside of his leg. So since we're seeing this side of his of his left leg, um, it would be the inside. But since this is his right leg, it's going to be the outside. And I don't have any reference necessarily to how I wanted his stripes to look from the outside of his leg. So I am just going to throw in a few like tiger stripes, just inferring how it would possibly look. And then same thing with his arms here. So we need to figure out his grip. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to kind of like fill in his his markings the way that I kind of think that they would be. So we have that, his little white white spot on the inside. And then we have some stripes going in here like that. Penny says a little striped leg, such a fun detail. Yeah, the inside and the outside of the legs. Yeah, I feel like that's something that that's that's a good 
way uh, or a good detail that you can add if you're looking at reference of the animal, which I was when I was drawing this character. Oh, side note. I just realized I forgot to draw on his tail. I will do that. I always forget the tail. Ugh. Um, but yeah, so um, when you're looking at, when you're drawing animals, I highly recommend looking at photo reference because those are things that you wouldn't think about unless you were looking at a photo of the animal, because typically for animals, you know, their, their underside, their undercarriage or the insides of their arms and legs are a different color, usually like a lighter color than the, than the outside, like their backs, uh, like tigers under undersides are typically like cream colored. Um, so you get those different, different details on either side of the leg. Um, okay. Yeah. So tail. Um, so when it comes to tails, don't forget that tails actually start here from the backside, of course, but, um, it's very easy to like, when you're drawing tails, it's very easy to imagine that like the tail starts here. So the entire tail is showing, um, like if this was a Fox, for instance, you might draw the tail, like starting here and coming out here. But really in all reality, if this was a Fox tail, the tail would start here and come out. So the, the most, the thinnest part of the tail wouldn't even show. And only these parts, like the thicker part right here, all of the, this would get erased. And then only that part would be the part that's showing. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when, um, when you're like trying to draw more believable animals. <clears throat> so we're going to draw his tail and especially like with animals that have long tails, you don't want to do it too long. If you were to start the tail from here and then make the length of a tiger tail, it would probably end up being way too long. Um, so just keep in mind that it's actually starting from the the center of the body and coming out like this. So maybe we'll come have it come up to like the bottom of the net here. I think I might have the end kind of curve a little bit. Like that. My keyboard, <laughs> my keyboard buttons are, oh, I'm sorry, my, my uh, key binding, my keys on my tablet are not working very well today. They're like all messed up. There we go. It actually looks a little bit too short. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to change the shape of it. So I actually did it on a separate layer, so I don't have to worry about messing up the rest of the design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle it out. And I think I'm going to curve it because I don't want it to be. So what's going through my mind right now while I'm doing this Um is that I could just have it come straight out like this, which could work. Um, but I also don't want the, the viewer's eye to be drawn away from the scene. Um, unless, I guess, since we read from left to right, it's possible that it could actually be drawing your the viewer's eye into the scene. Um, but as your, as your eye kind of like goes around the scene, it would at the end draw your eye away. Um, so I try to avoid using shapes like that in my illustrations uh, that would kind of like lead the viewer's eye away. So what I'm gonna try to do, I think, I'm either gonna curve the tail up or I'm gonna curve the tail down. I don't really want it to get in the way of the silhouette of the, um, the net because I think that the silhouette of the net is really important because that's one of our key words in our text. So I think I'm going to have the, to try to have the tail curve down. So let's see if we can get a nice curve out of this. <clears throat> it's 
So we're having the tail curve back in like this. So then the viewer's eye can continue back around into the illustration again. And we get some length on our tail. So then we can just add some stripes. And what I'm going to do when I add these stripes to this tail is I'm actually going to curve my lines um, going with the form of the tail. So we're going to add in our stripes like this and we're curving as we go. Kind of just keeping in mind how it would, how the form would um, go along. So if this was like, maybe this is like the top like tube part of the tail, or maybe we'll just keep that flat. So here's his little, his little stripes, stripes there. Okay, so yes, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to make these lines a little bit darker, just going to fill this in a little bit. Oh, and I also want to make sure that I add in his little, the bottom part of his, the cream part of his mouth here underneath. There we go. Okay, cool. So that looks pretty good. Then we can add in his little stripey arms. And while I'm working, I also want to make sure that um, the scale is correct for not only the length, but the width of his arms as well and his legs. Um, so I want to make sure that it looks right to scale, especially to our reference. Um, before, I was feeling like his arms were a little bit too thin. And also, I'm thinking that he's holding the net a little bit too high, so I'm going to get rid of that part of the net handle. And we're actually going to lasso this and pull it up a little bit. Because he has no leverage right now. <laughs> so let's pull this up. Penny says, I still watch explore.org since you mentioned it. Oh, yes. Explore.org is amazing. If you guys have never heard of it before, it's a YouTube channel. Um, they basically live stream from all different kinds of national parks around the country. And it's like 24-7 live streams. Um, and their most popular live stream is uh, the Katmai um, Bears from um, Katmai National Park in Alaska. There are... Um, they film 24 seven, the bears salmon fishing. Um, and it's, it's so fascinating to watch. Um, I started watching them last year, uh, late last summer last year. And it's, it's so interesting to just watch the lives of the bears, like teaching the babies how to fish and stuff. And just like, it's, it's so interesting. Um, okay. So that looks a little bit better. Still have to figure out his hands. Sam, I'm sure, is like the hand master when it comes to holding things like weapons and things like this. Not that a net is a weapon, but. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so it's going like this. So he's got his hand, this, this front hand that's coming across is holding forward like this. Oh, my brain is just, oh. Okay. My brain is dying. <laughs> I 
Sam says, I always take hand reps for characters holding stuff. A tricky one to get right without it. <laughs> it's so true. We are at the 34 minute mark though, so I don't want to spend too much time, but I also <laughs> especially because I can't actually get the pose right from here because it's the different angle. That's not right. Hmm. I should have just hid his hands behind his head, right? That's what we used to do. Like, can't hide the hands behind the body, you know? <laughs> I think I'm just going to go ahead and move forward because I don't want to spend too much time figuring it out. We are just going to pretend that these hands are doing the right things. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I also want to... Draw in, let's see, you guys said that, um, let's see, what, if we wanted to do uh, a bug for this scene, so we could do, we could do like a little worm, like a little inchworm friend, or we could do a butterfly, or um, I could look up, um, different beetles, um, like the little, like a little Hercules beetle or something. Like, you know, the little claw guy. I learned so much about bugs from Animal Crossing, you guys. No joke, like I, there's so many fish and bug names that I know just simply because uh, I grew up playing Animal Crossing. It's kind of funny. Or we could just do like a big old ladybug or something. A firefly beetle? What does that look like? Firefly beetle. Oh, is that just just a regular firefly? I was thinking I wasn't sure if it was it was something different than a firefly. So a firefly looks like this. And then he's got his wing separation. And then he's got little He's got little legs that like come out like this and then down like that. And then little little knee legs here. <laughs> like this. He's pretty cute. Hi, Alessandra. How are you doing? Penny says, oh, I was going to say that Ned is giving me Animal Crossing vibes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I might go with the... Um, I think I might go with the Firefly. I think he looks kind of cute. Even if like he's oversized like this, I think that that will work. And I think I'll just put him on a tree. <laughs> I'm feeling like um, little tiger's head is a little bit too small um, compared to our reference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lasso his head and just size it up a little bit. Oh, I just realized that I have some details on a separate layer. I'm just gonna merge that down. Just gonna size this up just a tiny bit. I think that looks a little bit better. I think he was looking a little bit too small. Yeah, that looks more like his character. Okay, so we can we can add some like little grass pieces down here, and maybe just like some different plants and such, you know, some vegetation. And um, we can move our little firefly friend up here. And let's also deselect. Let's go ahead and lasso this stuff. We're gonna 
think I'm just going to go ahead and delete all that. Oops. Let's move this maybe just a little bit over. Move him up a bit. Deselect. And then I'm going to kind of try to mimic the trees here from our original illustration. So we're going to go kind of like a wide trunk here. And then maybe we can also have just like some smaller trees, maybe in the background, um, kind of like in this, how I um, did these two trees, like a lighter color than this tree. And then also like a lighter color vines here in the background as well, just to kind of give it a little bit of depth and interest. Um, okay, so we can add just like some little veg plants here that are kind of coming out long, and then maybe just like some leaves that are coming like into frame from up here. Um, I don't know, just kind of like trying to fill in the gaps, you know? And you can add in some like bark textures. The circular frame is so fun. Yeah, you know, I, I do um, like shaped frames like this sometimes. It is a lot of fun. Basically, the, the way that I go about doing it is I'll literally just use a marquee tool and um, put a stroke on it. So that's, you know, my my frame um guideline essentially um and then i'll just draw within it i mean bob ross if you guys have ever watched bob ross he actually did the same thing with some of his paintings um and that's kind of part of the reason why i started doing it actually because i i really loved his oval paintings and his circle paintings um and he would just mask them off and then paint within the circle and then pull the masking tape off and it would be in that frame shape um and I feel like it works really well for like if you're doing spot illustrations for a book or something and you don't want to do a full bleed, it kind of adds interest. I even for this one, I did um, these like foreground plants that matched this, um, uh, the background color, this this white color here. So it, it kind of like adds a little bit of um, organic an organic feeling to the outside edge instead of it being just a pure circle. And then I also have like some things that are kind of um, breaking that border, um, like this plant here. Um, so yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to kind of like, like just play around with and play around with like ways that you can kind of like make it look a little bit more dynamic with the different frames. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to just delete this guy too. And let's go ahead and move this over here. So we have our sketch going now. And just kind of like coming in and adding in some details so I don't forget. I have a tendency to, like if I don't put them into the sketch, um, I am going to forget them. Like I'll, I'll tell myself like, oh, I'll just add that in when I color. But if I don't do it, if I don't like indicate that I need to do it early on, I'm just gonna forget about it. So I will always try to make sure that I add in like any like hash marks or anything, any little detail lines that I want to add into the final piece into the sketch um, because I will in fact forget. Um, oh, I just realized I never drew his shoes. So let's draw in his little socks, his little socks and shoes. Little explorer shoes. He's got little, I don't know, like little Oxfords or something. <laughs> I 
10 minutes colors go oh i know right oh my gosh i'm so slow at sketching you guys i i it's one thing that i um wish that i could get better about with my artwork but i am just such a slow sketcher it's that's that's one thing that i just you know it's like i i think it's especially when i have characters in my scene it's just like uh it's just one of those things that i just cannot get faster at um okay we actually, you know, honestly, we could do like a little color comp here. Like even if we don't get to the full painting, um, we could do a little color comp here. Let me pull up the sketch actually. And let's just like start throwing down colors. This isn't normally how I would go about coloring things, but we can just go ahead and try to do this and see what happens. Christy says, I love how cute this is. And thank you so much. Um, and I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna like pull in some of these colors like really quickly from our other illustration. I'm gonna grab that kind of mid-tone, mid-tone mint. It's really gonna help. Um, I feel like the green really helps pop the tiger orange color just gonna add in a couple more trees here and maybe pull in some some blobby shapes for the background just to kind of add interest here that's the fun thing about like doing backgrounds i don't do backgrounds very often just because i personally kind of struggle with them but um, something that I, that I attempt to do when I am doing backgrounds is I try to keep them simple and just remind myself that, you know, they're, they're just really all the stuff in the distance is just like little blobby shapes, you know, it doesn't have to be like a ton of detail or anything. Um, it's actually almost better when the things in the distance don't have a ton of detail because then they look farther in the distance, um, but it's it's one of those things that like I have to like really struggle to remind myself to do. So we got like stuff like that. And then maybe if we wanted to, we could just pull in like this red here kind of maybe like add little red flowers or something in here. <laughs> but look at Cody killing it. Color pick for the win. Always color picking. I mean, phew, I would not re be redoing this these color palettes over again if I um, didn't color pick. And again, another great thing about digital art is being able to color pick things from um, colors that I already previously used in an illustration, it allows me to just like quickly pull together, you know, a scene um, to see how I would want to go about doing it like this. Like, and I'm just using hard round brush, like just throwing in the color really fast. I'm not worrying about um, the, uh, like the cream parts of a uh, little tiger right here because I can just paint right over it like this. Got his little socks and then the underside of his leg here. Uh, Clever says, so much comes from your sketch that you got to get right. It's the bones. It's so true. It's so true. Um, I don't like this is basically like the sketch that I would take um, to go straight to color. Like I wouldn't necessarily need to render more than this. And I think that's why I always like my mind works mostly in shapes and color. Um, 
I'm not like a line work person, like working, like, so I have to make sure that I get my shapes right from the beginning. Like I have to have that strong foundation from the beginning. Cause otherwise it's just not going to end up looking right. Um, once I feel confident about the shapes in my sketch, that's usually when I'll move on to doing color. Um, even if the sketch isn't necessarily like done, done, if I can see like the potential in the shapes, that I have already on the board, then um, I'll usually be comfortable moving forward. So then we're gonna throw in this color here for his little outfit. I might even, so this is the great thing about color comps. I don't do them too often because typically like I'll just change my colors as I work. Um, so I don't typically work with color comps, but a great uh, purpose for using them is seeing how the color kind of manipulates the illustration. So like for instance, now that I have all of the colors in, I'm feeling like maybe, um, maybe the, the red flowers on the ground are a little bit too much and they're kind of pulling the viewer's eye away from the focus and the focus in this illustration is the net and secondarily i would say the character but the net and the beetle i would say are the two most important things in the illustration because those are the things that the text is mostly talking about um so i'm fine kind of feeling like see check time check i'm kind of feeling like these red flowers here um are pulling your eye away from that so like what we could do is let's like let's say we want to fill in all of these these red bits here and maybe even all the red bits over here maybe the only red thing in the illustration is going to be our beetle because then the eye gets drawn to the beetle really quickly when it's the only the only red thing in the scene um we could even maybe maybe all of this green down here on the floor is too much like what if we got rid of that oops and then maybe maybe we just put in some leaves just a few leaves like kind of here in the foreground kind of like how we have on the right side here and then that's it and maybe we could put in some leaves to kind of like help frame the top here because there are trees here so like maybe we'll put some framing leaves here and that kind of helps make it feel a little bit cozy almost. It's kind of helps with scale, kind of like makes the space feel a little bit smaller. Yeah, I think that I think that works, right? Something like that. And we zoom out is also a really great technique. So you can kind of see what you're working with. Maybe we can add in some of this lighter brown. Maybe I, I might actually trade out this darker brown for this lighter brown for the, the net. What's the marquee tool in Photoshop? Good question. So it's right up here on the top left. Um, you can basically, if you click on it and, um, uh, hold your mouse on it, you can make, uh, rectangular shapes or, um, uh, or round shapes. Um, I can demonstrate it here really quick. So with the elliptical marquee tool, I can click and drag. And if you hold shift, it makes a perfect circle. Um, and as you can see, it has like a marching ants selection. So if I let go, it actually makes that circle selection for me. So if I make a new layer, I can actually right click inside of that selection and then fill or stroke. 
um, just <laughs> fill it with one of my patterns. Um, so it, it will help you kind of like make that shape. Um, and then you can deselect and you can move it around like any other shape. So like I was saying before, um, I actually used the marquee tool just with a stroke like this to create my the the guide for my frame so i just kept this on a separate layer and then painted within or, or drew my sketch within that shape um, all right, you guys, so it is about time for me to go. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and and it's just been so, so much fun hanging out with you guys. I only have one more show in this series, and we are actually going to be revisiting my old illustration called Cats with Chats, um, and it's going to be like a cafe scene with cats. Um, so uh, looking forward to doing that with you guys, um, not next week, but the week after. And uh, I hope you all have a great evening and uh, stay safe. Bye, guys. <laughs>